so much, Oscar. Welcome everyone to St. James Presbyterian Church. Here we are on the corner of 141st Street and St. Nicholas Avenue. I'm going to ask if Stefan will keep an eye on the admit button because we're waiting for our liturgist ruling elder Andrea to join us, Andrea Bradford. If you will though, steady yourselves and be, let us get ready for worship and let us hear our opening psalm. Our opening psalm this morning is Psalm number 80. Psalm number 80, the entire psalm. Hear now these words. Give ear, O shepherd Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock. You who are enthroned upon the cherubim shine forth before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh. Stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O oh God. Let your face shine that we might be saved. Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry with your people's prayers? You have fed them with bread, bread of tears, and given them tears to drink in full measure. You make us the scorn of our neighbors. Our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, O oh God of hosts, let your face shine that we may be saved. You brought a vine out of Egypt. You drove out the nations and planted it. You cleared the ground for it. The mountains were covered with its shade, the mighty cedars with its branches. It sent its branches out to the sea and its shoots to the river. Why then have you broken down its walls, so that all who pass along the way pluck its fruit. The boar from the forest ravages it, and all that move in the field feed on it. Turn again, O Lord of hers, look down from heaven and see. Have regard for this vine, the stock that your right hand planted. They have burned it with fire. They have cut it down. May they perish at the rebuke of your countenance. But let your hand be upon the one at your right hand, the one whom you made strong for yourself. Then we will never turn back from you. Give us life and we will call on your name. Restore us. O oh Lord, God of hosts, let your face shine that we may be saved. This is our psalm for the day. Ruling on Andrea Bradford, are you with us? I am here. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. If you'll hold on for just a moment, it is so good to hear your voice. Oh, thank you. I wasn't sure where you were for a moment there. I know, a little bit of technical difficulty. But we are praising God that you are here. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now I am making sure that all of our wonderful friends on Facebook Live have you as well. So if you would like, if you would, I'm gonna ask Stefan to share our screen and we'll move forward with our wonderful liturgy and liturgies for this morning. Ruling Elder Andrea Bradford, if you will. Yes, yes, and, and another good morning to everyone. I'm so excited to, to be here to worship with you this morning, and we, we are blessed to be here in community, and we now move on with our worship. Uh, we have a call to worship. We are joyous in our call to worship. It says, take a moment, breathe. Feel the presence of God with you in this moment. When we worship together, oh, how your presence, presence is magnified. magnified. We have set our minds, hearts, and spirits to glorify the Lord. We will bring our hurts and our hallelujahs, our pain and our praise. We will give thanks for our sacrifice and our salvation, our fear and our freedom, our feeling alone and feeling loved, 
for you are an awesome and mighty God. Amen and amen. Let us now sing our opening hymn, How Great Thou Art, How Great Thou Art, found in number 467 for those of you who are with us in your blue hymnal. Ruling out the master.
We've probably heard that hymn all of our lives. And if you really think about the words and how meaningful they are, I, if you have a hymnal at home, look at the words again. It's just, it's so beautiful and, and helps us know how to adore our God and all that God has done for us all of our lives. Speaking of adoration, we move into our time of prayer and we begin this time of prayer with our prayer of thanks and adoration for our God. Yes. Mm -hmm. We adore the restoration you bring us mm -hmm. as we turn to you in gleeful expectation, mm -hmm. as you lead us through pastures and valleys and up to the mountaintops, your staff can be seen and we know you guide us. And when we are close to home, Jesus opens the gate for us to enter in. The Holy Spirit hovers above us to give us strength when we are weary. And as the last of us enter in, you take one more look and even send Jesus for the one who has gone astray. Finally, when we all come home, you turn and let your face shine on us, the beloved, the saved. In this moment, in this moment, we find ourselves melting in the love of your smile. We offer praise and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for one more day. Amen. You know, in the Hebrew, when we hear the phrase, let your face shine upon us, it is really meaning let your, your smile be upon us. What a beautiful phrase when you read your psalms to know that whenever you hear, let your face shine upon us, we are knowing and asking God to smile on us and he says yes.
light unto my path is he. For so without him I would fall. I don't know, I don't know just what he is to you. But to me, he's my for that applause it's it's so nice to know that people react to the words to these beautiful renditions of our messages we adore god god adores us and shows us that that god walks with us every step of the way we take those steps those steps go down the path that god has structured for us yeah. But sometimes the path gets a little bit hard to see and we step away, sometimes unknowingly, sometimes with not, not bad intention, but we have a chance then to come to God and say, we are sorry. Yes. We have our time to confess in community. As we reflect on our soul's response to grace, we will find that we've not always yielded the fruits of God's mercy. In our confession, in this confession, we bring to the altar how we have fallen short of God's intention for our works. We say now our prayer of confession together. God has taken care to plant us in the land tilled by God's hand. The stones have been cleared the soil turned over, and we are given plenty of room to grow towards the sun and have our roots go deep for a strong foundation. God has made the rain fall and the sun shine. The breath of God during our night's rest has prepared us to be a mighty crop. And yet, by our sheer will, we have taken it upon ourselves to grow wild, God gave us the power to grow justice, and we have yielded oppression. God wrapped us in love and care, and we have yielded envy and selfishness. We have found dissatisfaction with the land God afforded us, and looked to take more from other plots, destroying vines that should thrive. Forgive us, beloved gardener, Please help us to know that planted firmly, we are rooted with one another and assured your bounty in the harvest. Let us think about that for a moment, how God has prepared a place for us and it still ain't enough. And how we grow wild when God grows us for a specific purpose. Let us now hear our silent confession in your own hearts and to your own selves.
do silent confession. Because there are some things that we don't want to say out loud. But we can never fully enjoy the grace and mercy of God unless we place it all at the altar and leave it there. protects us we yield our body and soul for that protection god says when we step off that path you are forgiven we are forgiven we have that assurance of god's forgiveness of god's pardon 
our assurance says, as the history of the saints prove time and time again, God also cares for us by sprinkling grace and mercy to cover us all as we falter. Yes. The glory of the field is that even if the vineyard fails, yes. God assures us there will be a new season. Today we can say it's a new season. It's a new day. It's a season of power and prosperity. Yes, it is a new season. Yeah. Amen. upon us. So look forward to the new planting and the new harvest. 
Christ. Thank God for that today. Good morning and welcome again to St. James Presbyterian Church here on the corner of 141st Street and St. Nicholas Avenue in the village of Harlem in the city of New York. We are grateful that we are here worshiping today and we would like to just share with you a few of our announcements. Um, what you see on the screen and what you'll see in the bulletin is you will actually see that we have our, our email and all of the ways of contacting us. You can reach us um, and look at our website at www.stjamesharlemnyc.org. And if, for example, you say, wow, you know, I really like what's going on there in that church, and I'd like to make sure that they continue doing their ministry, and you just want to mail your offering, you can do so at 409 West 141st Street and St. Nicholas Avenue, New York, New York, 10031. However, if you don't want to do the mail and go through all the trouble of putting on a stamp and going to a mailbox or flagging down your mail person, you can also just go online, like I said, at what? www.stjamesharlemnyc.org and when you scroll down on that first page you'll see our PayPal button where you can go online and donate to our many ministries um, that we are working on here in the city of New York and in this neighborhood in Harlem today. We want to give thanks to, thanks to God for that. I also wanted to share with you as we usually do um, a saying that I usually attribute to my mom when she first started, I was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, she would weekly go through these bulletins to keep her mind active, and she would share with me these sayings of the day, and I would catalog them and have pages of them. Uh, she doesn't do that anymore, but I still dedicate this section of the bulletin to her call, From My Mom to Yours. Hear this saying from Gretchen Rubin, a developer of Four Tendencies Framework. She's an American author. Negative, emo negative emotions like loneliness, envy, and guilt have an important role to play in a happy life because they're big, flashing signs that something needs to change. Hmm. When you have those feelings, those negative emotions like loneliness, envy, and guilt, they have a role to play in a happy life because they're big, flashing signs. Notice the signs that something needs to change. Right. Thanks be to God for that. We also want to remind you that we have listed in many occasions um, the persons who have asked for prayer and those who are lifting up in thanks for prayer. Um, if you don't know their names and you, we don't read them out, please know that the prayers of the righteous avail as much. If you just take a moment and lay your hand out and say, bless those who are on the list for St. James, God will do the rest. And those of you who have the bulletins, the written bulletins, the printed bulletins here, please take them home and pray over them at home through the week and as you move forward. I wanted to also let you know that the St. James basketball team has actually boosted their record because the team forfeited on, on uh, Friday evening. Uh, they couldn't make it, but it was a wonderful opportunity to hang out in the park with the young people and to watch them getting better and better even in their practice rounds. So God is good all the time and all the time God is good. Many months ago, maybe many years ago, you all remember we had this issue with the parapet wall in the community house and we went through the Presbytery and we went here, we went to Harlem School of the Arts to try and work something out. And then we got a quote for $73,000 to have to actually have to fix that. And I'm happy to report to you that we're almost so close to zero, we only have $6,000 left to pay on that. It was over $6,000. Give yourselves that round of applause, yes, because do you realize how hard it has been for churches to raise a targeted goal of money like that during the past two years of the pandemic? Yes. It is a miracle that God is blessing us and God is keeping us together and God is working with us to maintain this beautiful building to maintain the community standards for our community house. We have a lot of work to do, but we walk with God and God talks with us and we know that we are God's own. So where there is our will, God is going to make a way. <laughs> Thanks be to God. And keeping with that, as we move through the summer and we're nearing the end of summer, know that coming up in the fall, we will be asking you, even though we don't do a formal stewardship drive, 
we're going to ask you to think about what your yearly giving goals might be. So spend the rest of August thinking about that. In September and October, we'll think about what that means. And maybe God is calling you. Pray with God to see how God is calling you to give in the year 2023 um, so that we can actually do our budget. We'll try and get that done in the fall so that we can actually prepare our budget for our congregational meeting, which we hope to have on time in January this year. And not put it off. So that's what we're that's what we're striving for. And your pledges will help us to sort of make that happen. And know that what we say about our pledges, it's not just um, just sort of like this is our offering and this is our stewardship. But you are also helping us to understand what it means that we are involved in ministry impact giving. Our giving is not just for our own spirits and our own well-being, which is good for us to be in relationship with God, but to recognize that when you give from your heart and when you give to God's building and God's church and God's ministries, that you are making an impact in the community. You are making an impact with your offering. You are the ministers of this church. You are the ministers of this church and your funds fund the ministry that you care about. If you want to fund the ministry and help our deacons, then that is a ministry that you're doing. If you're saying we want to give to the scholarship fund, that is a ministry of education that we're talking about. If you're talking about the maintenance of this building, that is a ministry of stewardship of this sanctuary. Everything, every penny you give, every dime you give, every dollar you give, is an aspect of how God is using you to be a minister in this world. I'm just a pastor. I may have a degree in all that other crap, but that don't mean nothing. I'm just one. You all are the ministers. That's why at the end of our bulletin, it says, what does it say? It says, the end of worship, the beginning of service. Right. And our offering and our tithes and our stewardship model is based on understanding that you have an important role to play in the impact of ministry of St. James Presbyterian Church. Sorry, I went off on that for a little bit, but I just got a little bit excited about the power of every one of you to be able to do something in God's world, whether you know it or not. And we are grateful. We're going to move to our next slide, please. I want you to know that we will be having Bible study, Bible study on Zoom. We have the information for the Zoom link on the computer screen. We also have the phone number for the Zoom if you would like to just call in for that as well. Um, every Monday evening, unless otherwise noted, from um, 6 to 7.30, we use the lectionary scriptures, the prescribed scriptures for our denomination, um, which we preach. And much of what you hear in the sermon has come from the discernment that we've had as a community of those who are studying and those who are doing Bible study, and it's very powerful. And every person, every person, in terms of womanist theology, of African American liberation theology, we like to think that, and we like to know and claim that all of us are theologians. <laughs> all of us are scholars of what the word means and how the word plays out in our world. So it's not just for me to say, oh, I have a, I have a degree and a PhD in the Bible, so let me tell you what's what. It's more along the lines of being in conversation to see how God is speaking with us. And that's what we do in Bible study. It's a different model than it is just to have someone sitting there and teaching you and giving you everything. Yes, I share information with you, but the information and the gut reactions that you all share with me, priceless. Priceless, priceless, priceless. So I wanted to share that with you as well. I wanted to remind you that we have many social media outlets. We don't have TikTok yet. But we do have YouTube, um, and I sort of share on, on my uh, Reverend D Rock Instagram page all the things for St. James because we haven't boosted that up yet for St. James. But we do have YouTube, and we do have a Facebook page. All of that information is there. So if you would join us, um, that would be great. Every worship service, every worship service for the past two and a half, three years, is on YouTube. Um, you should be able to find those at least for the last two years um, are on YouTube. And many of the Bible studies, when I get an opportunity to edit things, um, I sort of do that. One of the things I would like for you to do, um, and I'm asking this for you all, what I would like for you to do is to boost up the moment where we have um, Let the Children Come. 
I want you to interact with the younger generations in your community and in your family. The younger generations say, in the service that I went to on Sunday, there's a little five to 10 minute section that is just for young people. And I want to show it to you. And I want to watch it with you. And I want to hear what you think about it. Interact with your young people. You don't have to be here in the worship space in order to interact with young people. You have family members. You have community members. And this is a right up their alley. Hmm. Five to ten minutes of their attention span to talk about the text, to talk about our scriptures, and to talk about what they mean for us, and to talk about what is important for our community. So do that for me. Go to our YouTube page and check it out. And it's usually right around the hour mark or the hour and 15 minute mark, where you'll be able to get the let the children come message. So I ask for you to do that for me as well. Well, you all, I've been trying to figure this out and how to do this in, the, in a good way. And it's, it's one of those things where when you live in New York City, there are so many things that you don't do. I've never been to the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> I've never toured the barracks, the Continental Barracks at Staten Island. I've been to the top of the Empire State Building with my cousin, my dear. I've, I've been to the top of the World Trade Center before they blew up, but I haven't been to the new one, World Trade Center. And I haven't been to the beach, to Rockaway Beach, huh. the entire time that I've lived here in New York City. So guess what? I'm taking two weeks off. <laughs> <laughs> I may get on an Amtrak train and I may just get off at one of the, the towns on the Hudson and just stay at a bed and breakfast and just walk around. I may do that. I may drive to Cape May to say hi to my mom who will kick me out of her room after 15 minutes after we have a great conversation. <laughs> who knows? But great. the most important thing is that the time will be taken um, to just exhale yes. and to relax. And that is starting also meaning that next Sunday, the building of St. James and the worship here at St. James Presbyterian, you can move to the next slide, that the worship here at St. James Presbyterian Church here on St. Nicholas Avenue, um, we will be sharing worship, I will be sharing worship and being a guest preacher at Metro Baptist Church. Metro Baptist Church, you see it's in your bulletin. Um, I've just gotten new contact, so I can't really read close up. So I can't read it for you. But it's, um, it's on um, 40th Street off of 9th Avenue. And um, my former professor and now colleague, Troy Messenger, called me up because they're in the midst of looking for a new pastor. And they just wanted people to come on in. And so I'm going to be preaching for them next week. And the Zoom information is there. The telephone information is there. And you are more than willing to join in and to come on down to Midtown. If you are taking the subway, you get off at, at Port Authority. Um, on the eight, on the blue line, and it's sort of a block away from there. If you're driving, there's plenty of parking on 9th Avenue on Sunday morning, um, so you're more than welcome. It's a wonderfully progressive and wonderful con congregation that has great music and great people, and us working with them and joining with them and being asked, because of our vibrant worship, to be a part of sharing what ministry looks like with them is an honor and a privilege. So I invite you all next week to do so. One thing that you have to do, though, is to make sure that you don't take off. Don't take off Sunday and say, well, we're not doing St. James, so I don't have to do nothing. Go visit another church. Go online and visit someone else, and then come and tell us how God has blessed you. Maybe tell us something that you've learned that you'd love to see, or something that you're glad that we don't do, or something that you're glad that we do that's not being done. Let us share and worship and ministry with our colleagues and our friends around the community. It's nice to understand that we have this community here of ministry, but we're Presbyterian. And Presbyterian, the Presbyterian denomination is the connection of church. It doesn't do us any good if we're not, if we claim to be connectional, but we stay here. Yeah. So let's be connectional um, and figure out how God is calling us next week, next Sunday. Thanks be to God for that. Metro Baptist, yes. What Sundays are you taking? I'm just, I'm going to be taking the weeks off and I'm taking off the 21st, next Sunday. Next Sunday. Mm -hmm. So that's where we're at.
and thanks be to God. So if you if you call me, I may call you back. I may send <laughs> another elder to give you a call. I may forward your email to a deacon or to an elder. Um, but I'll just be taking it easy and maybe getting myself. I will tell you this. One of the things I will be doing for my own personal um, growth is that I will be looking at the three projects that I have um, that I really want to do and I want to start working on and start writing. One of the things I want to, one of the books I'm writing, I'm planning on writing is called Preaching in, Preaching in Conversation with Community based on our Bible study model for three years that we've been doing and how that affects um, theologically the congregation and how that works for preaching and how that works for Bible study and how, what the effect is when the community is involved in preaching and the authority is not so much given to the preacher. I'm also um, looking forward to going through and combing through our three years of liturgical texts and liturgies and putting them together so that I may be able to approach the Presbyterian Church about an African-American focused um, three-year liturgical cycle um, that people can use the liturgies that we use every Sunday because they've been effective for our, our purposes and what they might look like as a national model. And that's Sweet. the third book, the second book. The third thing I want to work on is with Rabbi Amakai, and we're going to be, I'm hoping to find over the next couple of weeks, a ghostwriter or an access to a ghostwriter who will take all of the recordings and all of the teachings that we did with our separation to reparation and putting that together in book form as well. Sweet. So, got to get some edification for myself as well, um, because that's what makes us understand that we don't let our gifts languish because God has blessed us way, way too much. And with all of that being said, huh. let's move on to our worship service and ruling elder Andrea Bradford, who will share with us our piece as written in the bulletin. To move to the next slide. Yes, yes, yes. And the piece, as you know, it's one of my favorite things to do because we get a chance to share a little love through the peace of Christ. It says the fire of Jesus purifies and makes the pathway clear for peace. May this peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. I'm going to fix this screen so that we can share with one another and do our peace of Christ.
Jesus Christ, bro. Jesus Christ, bro. Rise, Oscar. Yes. Wendy and Eric, it is a blessing that I'm, I'm glad that you made it back safely. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Got Shelby back home. Welcome back, Shelby, from camp. It's good to see you. Very good to see you. Yes. Uh, what am I trying to do here? Trying to pin this. That sounds good. Oscar, you got a compliment saying everything is sounding good. Ah. I mentioned that that worship service next week at Metro Baptist. Um, we'll be at 40th and, um, and off of 9th Avenue, but in the bulletin, I don't think it said that it's at 11 a.m., the same worship time, and it's on the slide, it did say that it was 11 a.m., so I just wanted you to know that we will be worshiping at 11 a.m., and if you need that, um, excuse me, if you need that Zoom information, phone or email, um, or or the, the Zoom address, please don't hesitate to call the church at 212-283-4541 or to email us or email me at pastor141 at verizon.net or stjames409 at verizon.net and we'll get you the appropriate information. So thanks be to God and we'll make sure that that happens. Excuse me a moment while I get everything ready for ruling elder Andrea Bradford to move us forward in our worship service. Pastor, we will be having Bible study tomorrow. Yes, we will. I still need help figuring out what to preach about, so. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get this back in, in line for us. Yes, really, Elder Andrea. All right. All right. It's always so nice to share love. It's so great to see faces and hear voices and, and know that the love is out there being shared among us all. So now we go to the part of the service, which is right up there with the piece. As far as I'm concerned, it's the sharing of the word, the reading and the hearing of God's word for us. And we begin this section with our prayer of illumination. May we say it together, time and again. You shore us up with new mercies and strength. May the words we read today bolster our faith in, in new ways, making our walk with you, O oh God, closer still. Yes, bolster our faith in new ways. We talked about it being a new season earlier in our prayers. And so we now move to reading about what it's like to move into a new day and in new ways and, and looking at what God's word says for us. And so our first reading is from the book of Isaiah, the fifth chapter, verses one through seven. Isaiah five, one through seven. Let me sing for my beloved, my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed it out, hewed out a wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. Hmm. Huh. And now inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard than I've not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? Hmm. And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste 
it shall not be pruned or hoed, and it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his pleasant planting. He expected justice, but saw bloodshed, righteousness, but heard a cry. And from the book of Hebrews, in the New Testament, Hebrews, the 11th chapter, the 29th verse through the 12th chapter and the second verse, Hebrews 11, 29 through 12, 2. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. But when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had received the spies in peace. Hmm. And what more should I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouth of lions, quenched raging fire, hmm. escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Hmm. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all of these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised since God had provided something better so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely and let us run with perseverance the race that is before us looking to jesus the pioneer and perfecter of our faith who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross disregarding its shame and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. And our gospel reading from Luke, the 12th chapter, beginning at verse 49, going through verse 56. Luke 12, 49 through 56. I came to bring fire to the earth and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized and what stress I'm under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the West, you immediately say, it's gonna rain. Hmm. And so it happens. 
And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, there will be scorching heat. And it happens. You hypocrites. You know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. When we come back from speaking with our young people and from the special music, we will be entertaining this thought, the wisdom of signs, the wisdom of signs. Let's move to our next slide. For those of you who are in the sanctuary who may not be able to see the screen on the computer right now, there is a beautiful image of someone standing up and telling a story to a group of people who are sitting around listening with respect and awe. But it is a photograph, I mean it is a drawing by a woman that is of the tradition of the Grio. The Grio, G-R-I-O-T. The Grio comes from the West African traditions, Rio or Jeli. The profession involves several responsibilities, y'all. So young people hear this, what is supposed to be expected of this Rio. They serve as public historians, storytellers, but there's no real word in our Western vocabulary to properly speak of their realm and tasks. A traditional griot, it reads here, could do everything from recounting history to composing music to teaching students to acting as diplomats. They are genealogists, historians, spokespeople, ambassadors, musicians, teachers, warriors, interpreters, praise singers, masters of ceremonies, advisors, and more. But not every griot does all of these things, but these are just some of the examples of the functions the griot profession embodies. Though the traditional role of the griot and some uses of the word may be strictly defined, we recognize that certain principles which undergird griotship, such as orality or telling of the story, community empowerment through knowledge, are rather widespread and have evolved in our area in diaspora in several different ways. And it's these connections that I'm drawing together with our text in Hebrews today. For example, there is a griot named Sundia, a famous, famous Malay griot. And we know that in the 14th century, in the 1300s, 300 years before Shakespeare, that he wrote and spoke of a tale that was just like what would become to known in the Elizabethan times as Hamlet, hmm. based in this African storytelling of truth bearing of community. And it is also, just so that you can think about this, Hamlet is often identified as the basis for Disney's Lion King. And by the way, Sundiata literally translates as Lion King. So we have this African tradition that goes back even way before the 13th tradition of telling the history of its people, the genealogies, the entire understanding of how one story connects to our present. Hebrews, what we just read in Hebrews, is nothing more than the writer being a griot for the Christian faith. He's talking about Barak, he's talking about Gideon, he's talking about Rahab, he's talking about all of these people, talking about the three Hebrew boys in the furnace, he's talking about Daniel in the lion's den. All of these people that came before us, that God touched and God blessed, and getting them up until the point that we are a part of that history, of God bringing people through. It is important in this book of Hebrews that these early Christians understand that they are connected all the way through history. 
until this present moment. I stand here as an African-American pastor, but this speaks to all people. It is important for us to know that we are connected all the way back. Our story did not start with being brought here 600, 500 years ago and dropped on the shores in slavery. Our story starts way before then. And you are connected to that greatness. We are connected to the greatness that comes before. So why is it important to understand this genealogy? Even though the genealogy has suffering in it, has pain in it, because we have overcome and continue to overcome. And that is deep inside you as young people and can never be taken away. That is the joy that the Griot is supposed to do and then give to all of the people in the community, to all of the people in the tribe. So much so, they don't have to go out and herd. They don't have to go out and hunt. They don't even have to go out and plant food because their role is so important. One thing that will happen as you get older is you will see that the world wants us to forget our own family and personal histories. We are made strong because of our own personal and family histories. Learn them. Learn the names. Learn the names of the people at your family reunion. Learn the names of the people from your grandparents and from your mothers and your fathers. Find out what they did for a living. Find out how they made it through so that you could be here today. Hmm. Hebrews tells that story for us as Christians. The griots tell that story for us as people in, from the diaspora, in the diaspora of Africa. But it is a tradition that can never go away and that is embraced by all if we stand up and claim it. As you claim the power of Christ and the power of those who have come before you, as our scripture says, there is a great cloud of witnesses watching, ready for you to find your purpose. Most gracious and loving God, we are so happy that you have come before us today and that you bring us to the understanding in Hebrews that what happened before reveals the gift that you give us today. May we never forget, may we always look back to move forward so that we can claim our dignity, our power, and our connection to you always bringing us through. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
cannot hide from it, we cannot run from it, 
we have to understand the wisdom of the signs. I remember one time I was driving in southern Jersey. You all think that New Jersey is just this little state. You can get lost there so easily. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was driving from Camden, from, from Haddonfield, to Haddonfield from Cape May, which is actually a two and a half hour drive. And as I got close to where I knew I needed to be, a section of the road that couldn't have been more than three quarters of a mile was closed. <laughs> and where I needed to be was on the other side yeah. <laughs> of that closed road. And the mm. sign said, detour. detour. Yes. I thought it would detour and go around and come back around this way and be a five minute jaunt. I detoured this way. And the next thing I knew, I was in the middle of a cornfield. <laughs> 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 and as I'm looking around for street signs and other signs, somewhere I saw this yellow diamond detour. <laughs> it took me for miles and miles along this pathway of these cornfields <laughs> <laughs> and farmhouses. <laughs> and then there was another detour sign. <laughs> <laughs> and it set me through this winding way and I had no idea where I was but for the sign. I could have turned around and freaked out. This was before we had GPS, y'all. Yeah, so yeah. make sure you understand that. <laughs> yeah. This is before GPS. So there's no one telling me, turn around. Yeah. You must turn around and go this way. None of that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm following these signs and looking for these signs and all of a sudden I, I turn around the other side of this barn through this rest of the field on the other side of the barn and right there was my destination. <laughs> it was right literally on the other side <laughs> of where I had taken that first detour was literally what I could see ahead of me had taken me all the way around. I never would have found it if I didn't watch for the signs. Now, it's not just following the signs. Let's be clear. Let's be clear about the fact that what Jesus is talking about here is not just watching the signs and watching for the signs or watching the signs as they go by. Jesus is telling us to follow the signs. That is the wisdom that is that little pearl of wisdom that we forget about when we are thinking about how to get from point A to point B, or when we're trying to see where God is leading us, we don't look for the signs. We're like I was on that road. I just wanted to get to the other side of that construction. I wasn't thinking about how God was trying to lead me and guide me. It's an interesting thing. When we don't follow the signs, the obvious thing is, is that we end up getting what? We get lost. Lost. Jesus is saying to us and the people to whom he's speaking in this particular text in Luke, he's just saying that you are going to be lost <laughs> if you don't follow the signs of the times. If you don't follow the signs of the times, then you will be lost. You will not be there as I go through what my baptism will be. Jesus is not talking about getting dunked in the water again. Jesus is talking about I'm about to go through a baptism that is going to cause me a lot of stress. He's talking about the cross. 
I am going through this fire, through this baptism by fire. That is what I have to go through. And you all aren't even aware of the signs. You have to be aware of the signs. Yes, he's talking very geographically. He is saying, you know, when, when, the, when the winds come from the west, from the sea, from the Mediterranean Sea, you know that it's going to rain because moisture is coming from the sea. And so it rains. And you know it's going to be warm and dry because when it comes from the south, it's coming up from the deserts of Arabia. So it will be hot and it will be dry. You all know this. You know this like the back of your hand and yet you're seeing things that are happening to you left and right and you aren't even paying attention to them. We could say, for example, this could be an entire sermon about climate control. <laughs> How long have glaciers been falling apart? Mm -hmm. Literally falling off of one another and dashing to the sea. For years, these are signs. How long has the sea level been rising? How long has it been too hot for too long? How long? Has it been that we have seen hurricane after hurricane after hurricane do destruction like we only remember once every 10 years from when we were younger? We ignore the signs, which leads me to the second point. First, we have to follow the signs, but now let me talk to you about why we don't follow the signs. There are two reasons why we don't follow the signs. We don't want to happen what we know is going to happen. <laughs> or we're hoping beyond measure that what will happen won't happen. <laughs> when we are scared of what's going to happen, we will shut our eyes and say, it can't happen if my eyes are closed. If I don't, if I don't understand that there are signs coming afterwards, if I stay on this one sign, then that, I'll, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. But in the meantime, the other signs are coming and things are falling apart and things are getting destroyed and God is doing God's best to say, open your eyes and see, do not be afraid for I am with you. The signs that God gives us are what God is saying, I am with you. Every sign that we actually see means that God is with us. So there is no reason to be afraid and hoping beyond hope that what we're seeing isn't going to happen, that's beyond our control. <coughs> but know that on the other side of what is happening in the world that God will be there. We cannot be afraid. We cannot be afraid of what the signs are pointing to because God is trying to prepare us to be strong to go through the storm. Mm. And if you ignore the signs for whatever reason, you won't be prepared. And if you're not prepared, you will be lost. These signs we don't want to follow, that we don't want to see. It's a very human reaction. We've seen the signs of what is happening politically in our country. Mm -hmm. mm. We've seen the signs of what is happening politically around the world. And because so many of us have decided that it cannot be that bad, it would be really scary if this really happened. It would be really scary if somebody tried to steal an election and told people to attack Washington, D.C. That would be really scary, but we see all the signs. I'm not going to pay attention to that. That's what we risk happening if we're paralyzed by fear. Paralysis by fear is a tool of the enemy. It is so easy for the enemy to say to us, be still or else. But we have to stand up and walk through the fire, just like those three Hebrew boys, and know that we will be untouched. 
because we are following the signs of how God is calling us to be. Many people will read this text and think that Jesus is talking about the sign of the times for the end of times. Here in Luke, Jesus is really telling people, if we are about to follow this, follow this way of God, follow this way of being part of God's kingdom and God's people, that I am here to reveal the signs that say why what we're doing is important in this world. That is also the third aspect of the wisdom of our signs. We have to understand that when we allow those signs to be our wisdom and our guiding force, that we are actually doing what God's will is in the world. The signs of the times, it prepares us to be ready to go out into the world because the world is going to need healing from this brokenness. The world is going to need water for this fire at this time. The world is going to need those of us who are going to be able to say, come in and let me feed you while you are starving. Mm -hmm. While you are starving for logic, starving for common sense, starving for goodness, and starving for love, and yes, starving for food too. Come in. We've seen the signs and we've stocked up. We've stocked up on justice. We've stocked up on love. We've stocked up on peace. We have so much peace of Christ that if you come unto us, you too will be able to share in the bounty because we've seen the signs. We've seen the signs of hatred and mistrust and lack of peace and warmongering and we have been prepared. The wisdom of the signs is to prepare not to be paralyzed. Mm. In the book of Luke, Jesus, the Lucan author wants Jesus to speak to all of us about what gifts Christ wants us to afford and to minister to a broken world. He knows that the kingdom of God is at hand and he wants us all to be prepared to share that message, to share that good news. <clears throat> because the signs of the times tell us the world is in desperate need of some good news. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is my favorite part of the wisdom of watching the signs carefully. We must know that we already are imbued with God's love, God's strength, God's power, God's goodness, God's mercy, and God's grace. We are imbued with the presence of God. The signs tell us when to put all of those things in action. So we don't watch the signs of the times because we're afraid of what's going on in the world. We watch the signs of the times because we're waiting for God to activate us. Y'all seen those videos where it's like, Holy Spirit, activate! Holy <laughs> Spirit, activate! This is what the signs tell us. When to activate the goodness of God for this broken world. So, watch the signs. Not so that we can answer the remarks on YouTube and TikTok and Facebook, but to know that God is readying us to be a part of the solution, to be a part of what is to come, to be a part of letting the world know that there's another way to be rather than this isolation, this fear mongering. This isolation is keeping us away from one another. I had a taxi driver this morning who said to me, I didn't realize that churches were still on Zoom. He said, I know what the problem that has happened because of the pandemic is that we have become isolated 
and we are not embracing communion with them. He said, I've seen it around the world. I've seen it in my home country. I've seen it in my community. And we are desperate for community. This is a sign of the times that when people are telling you to stay away from one another's spirits, it is time for our spirits to come together. Right. When people are telling you that you have to hoard everything you can and put it in your pocket and put it in your closets, those are the times when we share because we believe that God will provide. Usually the signs of the times will instruct us that we are to do exactly the opposite. They will instruct us that God wants us to do a new thing simply because it's a new season. It's a new day. The world will have us understand that the sign of the times is telling us that it's time for destruction and that it's time for mayhem. But when God tells us to look at the signs, God is saying it's a new season and I am ready to do a new thing. Hmm. So I encourage you, look at the signs of the times. Hear how the Holy Spirit, how God, and how Jesus Christ is instructing us to do something new. To turn the tide on the signs of the times and be wise to make real the signs of God. Hmm. Most gracious and loving God, we are grateful to you. We are grateful to you that we will be released from this paralysis of this crazy world in which we find ourselves. We are grateful to you because of your love and your glory and your grace and your mercy and your strength pour into us to stand up and read the signs and to our discernment, our discernment in community so that we know that you are calling us to offer your gifts to the world rather than cave cave to the scenarios that are brought forth by the enemy we are of you, O oh God Help us to push on through, through the crazy times, to the good times. That is your Basileia, your kingdom, and your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray that you will be our vision and guide us along the way. Amen. Let us pray this hymn.
Most gracious and loving God, we come to you now asking that you be our vision, that you open up our hearts to your discernment, that you open up our hearts and our vision to see the ills of this world that we need to pray for. Give us a vision for our personal ministries so that we can show how much we love you, O God, and bring that love to the world. Bring that love to those families who are suffering sudden loss. Bring that love, O oh God, to the Brimley family and their tragic loss. Daughter and grandfather. We ask, O oh God, that you look at our prayer list and know that the names that we see on the prayer list affect so many other people. Because we are connected in this world, we are not alone. But if we hurt, someone else will hurt. Let us claim in this prayer that if you are hurting, I am hurting too, and I will bring that hurt to God. Suffering does not happen in isolation. It affects so many. Lord, we've been hearing the sirens all morning long. And we know, oh God, that when we hear sirens over and over and over, it usually means that there is something emerging going on. And on the other end of those sirens, may those people in that community know that they are being prayed for. you will help us to breathe and exhale and just to rest, rest just a little while. We're being inundated with news that is baffling to us, oh God. The baffling news that is just causing tension and distress in this world. May we just find a moment to turn it all off and to breathe. Heal our hearts. Heal, heal our disquietness. Heal our distress. Lord, we know also right now that there are many young people out there in the world who are insecure and hurt. Whose mind is taking them to a dark place and not just young people of God. We ask that you would let them know in their time of need, all of those, that they are not alone and that they do matter. Your life matters. Let that mantra ring through to their heart. May they put down that razor blade or that bottle of pills, especially put down that gun. We feel that tension and tragedy.
represented in their triumphs and in their struggles. May all of our young people know that we love them and we are so proud of them. Bless DT as he starts another semester of school down at the University of District of Columbia that his hurdles may be overcome and that he may find a way to do the things that he needs to do to flourish. Bless our parents. Bless those of us who are not as young as we used to be <laughs> in our body, but whose spirits are doing cartwheels because of our love and joy with you. And we continue to spread the good news that Christ is yet alive and still making miracles happen. smile to our faces so that we understand that it was nothing but you and no one but you that brought us through one more day. We love you, Lord. We're grateful. Jesus, thank you. Holy Spirit, hallelujah to you. In order to affect all these prayers, God, you told us that Jesus said it, that you just say it in my name, it will be so. So we say, in the name of Jesus, we pray these things. Amen. And amen. Nice. Amen. It's that time. We have been speaking about our offering and our announcements. We've been talking about the ministries that we have to give to God all day long. And we want the wisdom of the signs to guide us in our giving. Because the wisdom of the signs are telling us that ministry needs to happen in this corner of the world. And the signs that we are still here so that means that we are chosen. May your offerings be a blessing for this ministry, for St. James Presbyterian Church and God's people and the impact of this ministry. Please come forward and give your offerings at this time.
is Jesus keeping you in so many signs for us around in this world. If they say stop, 
doesn't tell you just to stop and be still. It says stop and look at all the good things that God has done. If it says there's only one way, it means to follow Jesus. <laughs> if it says detour, it means you better look out because there's trouble ahead. <laughs> Wisdom of the signs. Yes. You know this now. But share the gift of the wisdom of the sign as you go out into this world. Because the world and all our sisters and brothers and those who identify however they identify, gender-wise or whatever, we all need some wisdom of the good news of Jesus Christ. A sign that we're loved, we're cared for. Mm -hmm.